welcome back. It is Monday. I am Mr. Sisatris, and this week I wanted to talk about myth retellings. Um, it's a really popular genre right now, and um, it's kind of exploding and taking over sort of the book world, and so I wanted to talk about some that I've read that I loved, some that I haven't read that I'm excited about, and some that I wish were made. Oh, and there's a cat now. She was asleep in the other room, and now she's awake, and so we'll see if we can do this without her knocking everything over. First up on the list um, is Madeline Miller. She's kind of the one that, I don't know if she started this whole thing, but she kind of g made it popular and trendy. Um, her two big ones are uh, The Song of Achilles, um, which is of course you know, the story of Achilles and Patroclus from um, the Iliad, and then Circe, which the kitty's named after. Um, which is the story of Circe the Witch from the Odyssey. Um, of these two, Circe is definitely my favorite. I love this book so much. Um, this one is good too, but I feel like it, it plays into kind of romance novel conventions to such an extent that I feel like the plot, like things just kind of have to happen just because and it doesn't flow in a kind of logical way. It's sort of, instead of, um, you know, Achilles and Patroclus bonding over something that they have in common, they just kind of start hanging out together. It just feels like, um, you know, the, the popular jock at school who just starts hanging out with like the small nerd and, um, and then it kind of goes from there. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it didn't really grab me. There's some very cool stuff in here. The prose is gorgeous as always. Um, I love how she describes Thetis, who's um, Achilles' uh, immortal mother, and she is so cool. Um, but Circe is wonderful. This book is so great. The story of kind of, you know, a woman coming into her power and magic and all kinds of stuff. And it's just, oh. It's so good. And this one also weaves in and out of a bunch of other Greek myths as well. So you get cameos and it all kind of fits together in a really logical way, which I just loved. Um, another one that I read recently was Herc by Phoenicia Rogerson. Um, this is kind of an odd one. I really enjoyed this one. Um, this is kind of an outrageous, goofy book. I don't use the word goofy lightly because there's quite a bit of death and dismemberment uh, in this one. Um, but the story of Hercules or Heracles is itself kind of a ridiculous story. And anytime it's been adapted, they've always had to kind of change it up a bit. Um, if you think of like, you know, the, the TV show with uh, Kevin Sorbo. Um, that one, they, it, it, it swings really wildly from like bleak, tragic episodes to like just outrageous, comedic, over the top ridiculousness filled with like anachronisms and like, it's just, it's a goofy, ridiculous show. And this book really embraces that. And so there's, there's stuff that's just hysterically funny. And there's other parts that you're just like, like this, because it's just brutal. Um, but she blends it all really well. And I think if you had done a serious take on Heracles, you would be so depressed by the end of it because he was not a nice person and his story was just awful. And so you kind of have to be a little flippant with it and have kind of a dark sense of humor to make it work. Um, otherwise you would just want to go cry in the woods forever after reading it. But. I still really love this one. Now this next one I'm reading right now, so I'm about a third of the way through it, and that's Ariadne by uh, Jennifer Saint, and I'm really enjoying this one a lot. Um, it's very serious, um, but it really gets into kind of the mindset of of Ariadne, who she, she really, really desperately wants to be sort of uh, an active player in things, but she's very sheltered, and she's sort of easily taken in, especially if you know the myth, um, Theseus did not treat her very well. Um, she believed him and fell in love with him, and then he betrayed her in quite an awful fashion. Um, and so um, it's really great to see kind of her grow as a character and be like, you know, she sort of starts out as like a cartoon sketch of kind of 
you know, the princess in the castle who needs to be saved. And as she goes, she kind of develops her personality and depth and sort of realizes that the world is cruel and it's not all a fairy tale. And um, I'm really excited to see how this one plays out, but I really, really like um, Jennifer Saint's prose. Now, another one, this one isn't uh, Greek mythology, but I do want to kind of branch out a bit more um, and read more non-Greek mythology stories. And that is Kaikei by Vaishnavi Patel. This is one of my all-time favorite books ever. I love this one so much. This retells the story of the Ramayana, um, which is a Hindu epic, uh, from the point of view of a character who in the book or in the poem is sort of a, like an evil stepmother character. And she's sort of there to move the plot along, but she isn't really given much of a, a story or a voice. And so this kind of fu like fully fleshes her out as a character, gives her a lot of depth, really gets into kind of the gray area that she sort of existed in. She was in a bad situation. She did the best of what she could. Um, but like, what else do you do when you slowly come to realize that your son is a reincarnated God who thinks he knows better than you? Like, how do you keep being a mother and remain a part of his life when all that's going on? It's just wonderful. If you haven't read the Ramayana, I would say read it afterwards or just kind of go into this as blind as you can because it's just fabulous. Her writing style is great and um, I just I really really enjoyed this whole thing and I really want to see more of what this author has to offer because she's great. Now temporarily jumping back into Greek mythology we've got Margaret Atwood next. This is the Penelope ad. Um, this is an interesting one. It's it's more of a artsy literary take on kind of Penelope. Um, it's broken up by these sort of asides where her her handmaidens, her, you know, the, the, the women who at the end of the original story are, are hanged, um, they kind of jump in and they comment on the situation in various genres. So like there's one that's like a poem, one that's like a song, one that's like um, a lecture, um, like a modern anthropology lecture. And um, it's really, it just kind of gets you thinking about sort of who Penelope was, how she handled the situation, and how her, her handmaidens, like, what was their part in the story? Because in the original, they're just kind of killed um, as sort of a way to end the story. It's sort of retribution for them kind of teaming up with the suitors. And um, it's just, I don't know, this one's really, really interesting. It, it's not for everyone. I know some people didn't really like the different genres and the different sections and how it changed. Um, it felt kind of weird and they just didn't really get it. Um, I really enjoyed this one, but you do, it's not like, it's more poem than novel, if that makes sense. So, but this is definitely worth checking out. Now, this one isn't really mythology, but it's a retelling of um, a folk song. Um, it's called a murder ballad, which I just, I love that there's a genre of music out there called murder ballads. Um, but it's uh, the story of the Twa sisters. Um, there's another version of the song called the Bonnie Swans. Um, and Lorena McKennett did a version of that. So it's that story of, you know, two sisters, one of them is murdered, and then she's turned into a harp somehow, and the harp kind of reveals who killed her. Um, and that is a Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is another one of my favorite books of all time. I adored this. She's writing another book. It's coming out soon, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, but I just, I really, really enjoyed this. It gets into the personality of the sisters. It introduces a third sibling, which kind of enhances the, the dynamic in great ways. And it also blends in with sort of Arthurian legend and um, ancient English, not prehistory, but just like ancient British history. Um, and it just blends everything together so well. It's so much fun. It's just beautiful and I adored this book so um, just definitely give this one a go it's it's great 
Uh, and next up, we're finishing up with one that um, we're back into Greek mythology, and that is Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. This is a Medusa retelling. This one's kind of interesting because it's more about the idea of Medusa. Um, it casts Medusa as very much like an innocent person who just sort of wanted to live her simple life. Um, and everyone else sort of intersected with her life in horrible ways. And so it's not so much a like a revenge tale where it's like this is Medusa's side of the story and she's getting even. It's more just look at how people perceived Medusa and how they treated her and how we interact with the other people in her story. People like Athena who cursed her for being assaulted by Poseidon in her temple. Um, according to Ovid, that's how Ovid says it. That's a, kind of a late addition to the story. Um, or Perseus, who's the one who actually beheads her. And, you know, Andromeda and the, the princess who Perseus saves using Medusa's head. And so it just, it's all these people who kind of orbit her story. And it asks really big questions about sort of who she is, why is she a monster, what is a monster, all that kind of stuff. It was really, really excellent. I really enjoyed this one. So now we're going to get into some that I haven't yet read, but I'll throw out there as kind of recommendations if you are interested. Um, so continuing on from um, Natalie Haynes, this is her other book. I have not read this one yet, but it's A Thousand Ships. This is Helen of Troy's story uh, from the, the Iliad, and I cannot wait to read this one. I'm really, I really enjoyed Stone Blind, and so I'm really curious to see how um, Helen of Troy's story um, is sort of given depth because she's often another misunderstood character from Greek mythology and isn't very treated or isn't treated very well. The next two are uh, Jennifer Saint. She wrote Ariadne um, and this is her um, her next two books that came out after that one and that's Electra which is a story of you know Electra and Clytemnestra and Agamemnon and all that kind of stuff and then Atalanta uh, who was one of the Argonauts um, she has that great story, I think, with Hercules, um, I think so. There's like the golden apples and the race and she's amazing and she was also not treated very well. Um, and so I'm really excited to read these ones and get more, more into their, their backstory. And then also this is another one, it's a series that's in progress, uh, but the first two books have been released and that's Claire North. Uh, Ithaca and the House of Odysseus. Um, this is obviously, you know, another Odyssey retelling from the point of view of um, Penelope, and I cannot wait. Each book is narrated by a different goddess, um, and I think the first one is narrated by Hera, who's another great character, misunderstood, and I just, I cannot wait to get into these. Um, but I've heard nothing but good things about these ones. There's a whole bunch of other ones. There's too many for me to list here, but um, that's a start, at least. Um, I do want to get into more Norse mythology retellings, um, and so I know there's a couple out there that are really well regarded, so I'm, I'm expanding my my world into there. I'd love to see books retelling um, it, like ancient Egyptian mythology. I haven't seen many of that, and if I did, they weren't very good. So um, I don't know if you if you're aware of any other myth retellings, um, send them my way. I'd also love to read like you know Chinese mythology, Japanese mythology, um, Eastern European mythology. There's a whole bunch of good stuff out there. Um, so if you have you know the Baba Yaga story, you know, send that my way because I am interested. So, but anyways, with that said, I will let you go. I'll see you next week. Have a happy holidays and keep reading. Bye.